hey what's up guys welcome to my channel and today in this video I'm going to talk about why I am thinking again to move back to a filament based application for my blog currently I'm using a headless CMS along with it I'm using Next.js to build my Jamstack kind of blog application okay and although the CMS is working fine for me I have recently uh, seen that I want to do a lot more which are functionality based and hence you know the CMS was not something which I was comfortable with I won't say that uh, you know that's not a best approach but I feel more comfortable with Laravel and hence I was thinking of migrating and when filament latest version filament 3 came in right I it just clicked that yes you know this is what I would want to have my backend in and that's the reason I have started to migrate my entire blog to filament and this set of videos is basically my walkthrough of how I am setting up Laravel with filament for my blog application again the front end is going to be the same it will be a next.js application consuming APIs from my Laravel application built on top of filament right and um, yeah I mean you know, the blogs will basically expose the uh, data in form of rest APIs so in terms of structure I have a very simple way of dealing with things so I'll show you I have you know title I have a slug and I have basic uh, summary of my blog and then there is one image field and rest everything is basically um, how do you say it's a body um, a body field in my database which has everything inside it okay so it's a very standard and simple implementation of a blog now I am going to do the same I'll show you what I have done and then we will do a code review of it so I have you know this blog piece over here and this is how I have set things up I have a title if I put anything in here I'm generating this slug based on what I have then I put in a small summary so let's just copy something from here and let's see how things work okay so I have this maybe I'll copy the title as well alrighty and then there is a section title what basically that means is if you go over here You'll see this is actually an h1 which i haven't uh, done a proper css for it but i'll put this and i'll say this is my h1 okay and then i'll have a paragraph like so and in here i'll just add that that pretty much sums up what i'm trying to do because you know, i'll have a few more components but this generally takes care of the entire thing and then I have this published flag which I'll put in right now and then I'll do create so what it does is obviously I'll show you in my database it has created this title slug summary body body has everything in it right and then is published so that's pretty much what I wanted to do and it is working fine there are a few things which I still need to add to it for example I should have a way to categorize because uh, my blog primarily has articles on web and a few articles on travel I like writing about my travel experiences so I have a few uh, travel related stuff as me so that is something which will go into categories and then I'll also try to add tags because based on that I will be able to do certain kinds of recommendations and stuff like that which you know is something in my plan so yeah this is what I have done so far so let's understand what is happening obviously I have a blog model where you know, I have these fields as fillable okay uh, I have title slug body summary and as published the body field is casted as an array because you know I have if you see over here this is a builder you know what I have after my summary this is a builder 
component of filament so it needs that treatment uh, sorry that data type okay and in the model i haven't done anything else um obviously based on the model you can understand that you know my blog stable has a title it has a slug summary body and is published is published is indexed okay i am missing maybe a relationship or scopes uh, around you know published articles but that i will do later on okay um and obviously let's now understand the resource file which we have um so i just went ahead and created blog resource so i'll show you um yeah so if i i basically did filament resource blog resource and it created this file over here and basically inside filament i have resources blog resource three pages one for create one for edit and one for listing of the blogs and i have the main resource file okay now and if if you are not already familiar with filament i'll just give you a quick understanding so a resource file is where you control uh, first of all the listing of your resource <coughs> in the form of the table which is being used to list so this is you know the table which we are talking about there are a lot of functionalities which you can add to it for example filters actions and stuff like that but we will go into that later i haven't done that as of now but i have said that my table should display the title and the created ad okay that is what i am primarily doing and then the most important part is the creation or the edit of the resource so if you see we have a static function called form and in that form i have a group this group is basically what i have over here okay so the group has a section this section is primarily to get that you know this rounded corner kind of a thing and then in that section i have text make a uh, text input you know which gives me this text field i have a slug okay and the slug if you see is disabled all of them are required but the slug is disabled and it is dehydrated which means when i'm submitting you know this value will not be taken it will be kind of you know i'm using a state over here so that's why the dehydrated is used now so required is fine live on blur true this basically means that whenever i am typing something okay the validation will happen at that point okay and after the state is updated what i am doing is i am taking this state which means the title fields state and i am modifying it and setting that value to my slug so if you see the function name over here is after state update okay it has a callback function it gives me the ability to get the set function and the current state now in the set function i'm saying that the path the property which i need to set is the slug and that's the reason whenever the title is getting updated the slug gets updated and what is the value of the slug well that's where the state property comes into picture first of all i'm converting the title into a string slug thing so automatically it you know takes the laravel's helper function and it does all the cleanups and stuff like that and in the end then i'm adding you know this date formatter so that first of all it allows me to be unique with my slug and also in the url i will get the timestamp so that later on it will help me to understand how many articles in google analytics i you know i can do certain kinds of um, you know filter to understand how many let's say 2003 articles are performing in what sense and a 2002 articles and stuff like that okay pretty basic stuff but i like to do that um fair enough so i have the slug so you see this is disabled this is dehydrated i have also set a unique property on this the unique um, property 
is required so that I don't have two slugs with the same value, obviously, because then my, my code will fail. Okay. And for that, I'm saying that the table is going to be the blog class. You know, you get the model from the blog uh, class and then the column which you need to uh, look at is the slug. Then I have my summary, which is a markdown editor. And that's the reason I get this beautiful looking markdown editor over here. Right. And then comes my body. Now, this is basically where you know, one after the other, I'm getting everything. So um, I could have done these collapsible as well. Come to think of it. Let me show you what basically that does. Then is this is my builder schema. Um, pa, 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 pa. Schema is fine. Okay, it doesn't give me a collapsible, uh, which is a bit strange, but okay, it's a block. Maybe I'll get it over here. Collapsible. Okay. So what happens is I can kind of uh, close them down and then what it makes it a little easy. So let's see the first one in the builder is a section title because in my builder I have one kind of block which I can expect which is the title. So I have an input field for title which is required. Then I have a select list basically this heading okay and it can have only these six properties and again it is required. And then I have one more kind of block. I'll basically for indent it like this. Uh, so one more block which takes a markdown because it's a paragraph. So this paragraph thingy over here will show you this, right? So this is what I have done. And based on that, what happens is, and I'm getting the data. Now, it is important to also understand how I got this two column layout. Okay. So the first thing is in my form schema, I have a group, I have a section. And this schema, I have defined this as three column layout. Okay. So we can, you can divide the entire screen into one, one column, two column and three column layout. Okay. Now, if you see the first group over here has a call span of two, which basically means that this entire group is going to be equivalent of two columns. So the width it will take is equivalent to two columns. Okay. And that's the reason it is a little wider compared to this particular thing where I will primarily have all my metadata and stuff like that. And then I have a section where you know, the section allows me to have these rounded things and stuff like that. Right. And there I have my toggling off is published. Then my placeholder for created at and you know they are um, obviously the content is coming from the blogs created at and updated at but they are hidden when I don't have any blog ID. So when I am on the new blog thing you can see they don't show up because they I don't have a value as of now. So how can I show that right but when I'm on an edit page so basically if I go to this you will see that these val values are being populated. And this is the beauty of most of elements function where, you know, it allows you to do conditional stuff and it's thought through. So yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. I mean, this entire thing is what 35 to 80, 85, so around, you know, uh, 50, uh, 50 lines of code. Overall, my file is about 130 lines of code and you know, with that, I have so many things already up and running, right? So that's, that's the beauty of filament. I'm getting everything in place and, you know, basic functionality is working. The database is also capturing whatever is required. So yeah, I will uh, continue with this um, 
development of my blog uh, the back backend application uh, and uh, i will also show you how the apis are created so that and it helps you understand how things are laid out uh, maybe once just the blog is created i will make it you know, available as a open source uh, repository so that anyone can uh, basically clone it and do stuff with it okay so thanks for watching guys i hope you like this video and this format of where i am you now walking you through the entire code base of the functionality that i am doing and yeah if you like this video then do click on the thumbs up icon and don't forget to subscribe to my channel